Some people are gonna tell you that cars aren't investments, and for the most part, they'd be right. But there are some exceptions that actually make people a ton of money. In fact, there's a couple cars on this list that I have personally owned and I've turned a nice little profit on enjoying them. And believe it or not, there are still some luxury and performance cars that have hit rock bottom and are starting to actually shoot up in value right now. So you better act fast because if you don't, well, you're gonna miss an opportunity to make some money and enjoy driving these cars for free or even make a little dough doing it. And so I put together a video of some of the best sports cars that are skyrocketing in value, and it's not too late, but it's about to be. And if you're new here, I'm Brad Danger, this is Ideal, please subscribe and turn on that notification bell, and buckle up, and let's go. So, we've all been doing a lot more online shopping, and that's where today's sponsor, Honey, comes to save the day. You see, it's this free browser extension that finds promo codes that saves you money while you shop. And if you're anything like me, which, I know you are. You hate getting to that checkout and leaving that promo code blank. But that's where Honey comes in extremely handy. You see, with just two simple clicks, it is installed. And just last week, I was buying a lift kit for YouTube girlfriend, and you know those things are not cheap. And when I got to the checkout page, Honey found some coupons. It saved me $386.90. And guess what, Ideal Fam? Those of you that have used the Ideal Media link have already saved over $10 thousand dollars. So to install it in just two simple clicks, go to joinhoney.com slash ideal media, click add to Chrome. It's free. And then add to Chrome. And just like that, you're ready to save money with the rest of the Ideal fam. And I made it super easy for you to download for free. Just click the link down in the description because if you have a computer, Honey should be on it. Again, that's joinhoney.com slash Ideal Media to download in two clicks. So support the sponsors that help us make Ideal content for you. And thanks again, Honey, for sponsoring today's video. Back to the show. First up is gonna be the most obvious example, and it's a car that every gearhead just dreams about. Yeah. We're talking about a Toyota, the Toyota Mark IV Supra. And the Mark IV Supra has just always been an amazing car, but the Fast and Furious franchise really put it on the map. It was the hero car in the first movie, and the Mark IV was produced from 1993 to 1998 in Japan, and it was offered only with inline six-cylinder engines. But the twin turbo was the one to have, and while the automatic was available, the real winner here was, of course, the manual transmission, because, well, save the manuals, which you can do by buying our best-selling Ideal T. And just less than a decade ago, driver-grade Supras were going for roughly $10,000 or less. They were a great buy and extremely tunable and not to mention the massive aftermarket that follows these cars. So it made it super easy to turn your Mark IV Supra into a drift demon like Brian O'Connor's, or a supercar slayer, which you can find by just YouTubing Mark IV Supra on the internet today. Now, as far as the past couple of years though, Supras have skyrocketed in value, and a mint 10,000 miler sold on Bring a Trailer for $128 thousand dollars and clean examples below the fifty thousand dollar mark even are becoming harder and harder to find and although these prices are a lot more than yesteryear they still haven't stopped rising so i would still be interested in getting into one at the prices that they're trading hands for today knowing that they're probably going to stay at that level if not slightly creep up over the next year or two and here's one with seventy thousand miles on it for just under 63 grand and i could definitely see you driving around in this car and getting all of the attention that you deserve. Well, the car deserves. You, eh, debatable. But what's not debatable is that this next car is an absolute driver's favorite. And it's a car that's popular regardless of which generation you're talking about. Yeah, we're talking about the BMW M3. And the E30 was the model that put the M3 right into the earshot of real drivers. And it's back from an era that the BMW really was the ultimate driving machine, not the soft, automatic, all-wheel drive stuff that they have rolling off the lot these days. You see, the E30 M3 got a little 2.3 liter inline four in a manual transmission. Now, this little S14 engine loved to play high in the revs. And although it didn't put out mind-boggling numbers, this car was a momentum car, known for balanced driving dynamics and impeccable road manners. It really is a real driver's car. And if you ever get the chance to get behind the wheel of one, do not turn it down. Now, while the lesser E30 models, the 318 and 325s, are definitely more accessible and more affordable, I would say that they are almost as much fun. In fact, my first car, this 1991 318 IS, yes, this is all that I have left of it because the rest was, uh, well, 
another story for another day. The 91 318iS is actually considered the baby M3, and even those are going up in price. Heck, all E30s for the most part are going up in price every single day, and it starts at the top and works its way down. So, a 1998 M3 with just 8,000 miles recently sold for $250,000 which is an insane sum of money, especially for a car with an MSRP of just over 35,000 bucks. And if you got the dough, well, you can find an E30 M3 nowadays for roughly 50 to $100,000. And here's a beauty that has under 30,000 miles on it for 110K. And if you use the ideal car strategies and buy it like a pro, you're looking at not spending six figures. And if you have a 10th or a 20th of that to spend on an E30 BMW, well then I would look for a 318 IS or 325 IS and definitely look for one with a manual transmission. And you're gonna have a ton of fun driving that thing and probably make a little bit of money enjoying it. Now. If you thought we were done talking about BMWs, well, not yet, because a more modern classic is out there. And I think a lot of people would agree with me and say that it is a better buy than the E30 M3 today. Yeah, we're talking about the BMW 1M. And let's not get this confused with the M1. Although those are definitely fetching some ridiculous prices these days, that's more of a collector car that yes, can be used and thoroughly enjoyed, but if you want something a little bit more tech forward, well then the 1 Series M might be your golden ticket. You see, the 1 Series showed up in 2008 with the 128i and the 135. I. And what people loved about them was that they were driver focused cars that were rear wheel drive that had straight six engines and hydraulic steering. Just the stuff that BMW enthusiasts were looking for at the time. And then BMW dropped the M version. And this twin turbocharged N54 six cylinder had some of the most balanced driving dynamics ever offered on a production car. And enthusiasts went nuts over this car. And BMW sold every single one they could make. No, literally, like every single one. And the 1M is one of the only BMWs made in the last decade that's worth just as much now, if not more, than it was when it was brand new. <laughs> If only I had $47,000 to spend on a 1M back in 2011. That would have been awesome because they never really depreciated. And the cool part is that still no car really like it exists, except maybe the M2 CS, but you're dropping six figures for that thing and it probably is gonna depreciate. And so with limited numbers, and since most people don't wanna sell them, the 1M is creeping up in value. And you can still find them in the $50,000 range, but take my word for it, it's not gonna get any cheaper. So if you want one before they're completely unattainable, now is the time. And if you're ready to pull the trigger, something like this 2011 1M with just over 30,000 miles on it has a starting price of $52,000. That I would work somewhat hard to get into the fours, but that is a hell of a car for 40 something thousand dollars. And the next car is a popular one. It also hails from Germany. And I think you know what we're gonna talk about next. Yep. You see, pretty much every generation of the Porsche 911 has appreciated big time over the last five years. You got the air-cooled cars like the 964 and the 993, and those things went up incredible levels a few years ago. And as of late, the 996s and 997s, the first of the water-cooled generation, are starting to follow suit. And heck, even some of the early 991s, especially the GT3s, <sighs> Man, if you told me you had $100,000 and you wanted the ultimate track toy that you could beat on and sell in a year for as much as you got in it, if not more, a 991 GT3 would be the only way to go. And as you know, with the 991.2s and the new 992 models, the major shift was to turbocharging. Even the base Carrera is now turbocharged. And I get it because of EPA standards and just like the shift from air-cooled to water-cooled where Porsche pretty much got every ounce of power out of that air-cooled engine and now had to switch to a water-cooled to continue to progress forward. Once all Porsches had a turbocharged motor in them, sans the GT cars, it seemed like, well, it lost a little soul. And that's why I'm gonna talk about the 996 and 997 generation 911s. And I suggest hopping online and buying one before it's too late. Not only do I think every enthusiast should own a 911 at least once in their career, but the 996 you can still find for under 20,000 bucks. And the 996.1 C2 with an LSD might be the most fun vehicle you can buy for under 20K. It's light, it's nimble, and it hits way above its weight in both looks and driving 
driving performance. And I'm 99% sure that you could buy one today and drive it for either free or make a little bit of money doing it, which is the theme of this video. And that is not bad, eh? Now, you can move forward with this low mileage 996C2 for roughly 30,000 bucks and do just that. Yes, I know it's more than 20 grand, but if you buy one with the ideal spec, that is the best way to maximize the exit. And I think now is the perfect time to talk about a Japanese hot coupe that was understated when it was new and it's growing more and more desirable by the minute. Yeah, we're talking about the Integra Type R. See, the Type R name has been resurrected in the last couple of years, with Honda launching the CTR, or Civic Type R, which a couple years ago I had quality seat time with at one of our local tracks, and that thing is so freaking good. And while the new Civic may share the same name and paint color with the Integra Type R, that oh so clean and dreamy championship white, that's about where these similarities end. Well, they're both front wheel drive and some of the best handling cars ever made. Except the Type R was the OG. It was the one that was known in the automotive circles as the best handling front wheel drive car ever made. And although the Civic Type R is pretty much just as good, you gotta respect your elders. And back in 1997, the Type R was introduced with that telepathic steering that gave drivers real feedback. Something that today's cars just seriously don't have. And that Type R used Honda's naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine with VTEC technology. And the whole car was built by the motto, simplicity is king. This car didn't have any frills or crazy styling cues, basically the opposite of the new CTR. And I guess that, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right Honda? Plus the Integra Type R's engine had an 8,400 RPM redline on a 10,000 RPM tachometer, making this car a certified screamer. Now, clean examples today are fetching $30,000 at the bare minimum, with some exchanging hands as much as 50,000 bucks. And remember people, that is for a front wheel drive Honda that had optional air conditioning. What a crazy world we live in. And here's an 01 Integra Type R in yellow for 45,000 bucks. And while the Type R is special, this next one is a very special one. It's more of a performance sledgehammer than a sports car. And before the Porsche Panamera, there was this, the 500E from Mercedes-Benz. Wait, what? A Mercedes? Like the Porsche Panamera? Well, you see, the Mercedes 500E has a pretty interesting history. It was produced in the early 90s on the E-Class platform, and the 500E actually had fine tuning from Porsche. You see, in the days before manufacturers had insanely strict budgets to stick to, Mercedes built their car at their Stuttgart factory, then shipped them one by one across town to Porsche for them to have their way with it. Then they shipped them one by one back to Mercedes for the finishing touches. So it kind of is Porsche's first four-door sedan. And one of the best things about it is the power plant. The 500E had this ridiculous five liter V8, which made it the fastest sedan of its time. Yeah, this thing is pretty special considering that it was worked on by one of the greatest performance car makers of all time. Nowadays, shipping a car back and forth like that would be an unthinkable move. And I don't know about you, but I kind of miss the old Mercedes. Now, the 500Es, like other Mercedes of the 90s, were worth next to nothing just a few years ago. But the secret on the 500E has been getting out, and values are starting to go up like crazy. Nowadays, a decent one can fetch up to $50,000. Wow. And you're warned, they aren't exactly cheap to keep on the road either. But if you're ready to try the original Porsche sedan, here's a silver 500E for just $44,000. And that has under 64,000 miles on it. So it's barely broken in. And the 500E was the fastest sedan in the world until this next car was produced by well, our friends over at BMW. Yeah, in 1999, they came out with the E39 BMW M5. Now, the E39 was a special BMW, and one that most enthusiasts consider as the best M5 ever, and maybe even the best sports sedan ever built. Powering this sucker was a 4.9 liter V8 that shoots out 400 naturally aspirated horsepower. And with a zero to 60 time of just 4.6 seconds, yeah, you guessed it, it made it the fastest sedan of all time. And one of the best parts about the E39 is that you could have any transmission you wanted as long as it was a six speed manual. And so you knew right off the bat that BMW was making this for the drivers. 
And this is one of the ultimate driver sedans ever built. And BMW sprinkled some interesting touches on this thing. Like they used a recirculating ball steering and a drive-by wire system unlike anything the world had ever seen. And at the time, and you pulled up next to a supercar in your E39 M5, you'd probably be sending that supercar home with its tail between its legs. And fast forward 20 plus years, not only do they still look rather contemporary, but their prices haven't gone through the roof, but they're getting there. For a mid-grade E39 M5, you're looking to spend at least $20,000 now. But if you're looking for a low mileage one with a quality spec, you can reach 50, 60 grand without flinching. And if you're ready to drop the dough on one, here is one with the ideal spec with under 70,000 miles on it for less than 50 grand. And the thing that gets me extremely excited is that this younger generation of enthusiasts, as they start to have more and more disposable income, you will start to notice more and more of these JDM cars from the 90s going up in value. We're already seeing it with nice examples of Nissan 350Zs, and even the Mazda RX-8 are starting to go up and still have room for appreciation. Now guys, while we're on the topic of cars that are skyrocketing in value, I gotta throw in an honorable mention, the Nissan GTR, but not the R32 GTR, the middle child, the one that doesn't get the respect that it deserves, kinda like me, the R33 GTR. And not only is this thing easy on the eyes, but it has that famed RB26 DETT 2.6 liter twin turbo six cylinder engine in it, just like its older brother, the R32. And although both make a claim 276 horsepower, you know this thing is pumping out at least 330 horses. Plus it has a wider track than its older brother and a more aerodynamic body, giving it better handling and less front end lift at speed. And when comparing an R32 to an R33 stock for stock, well, it's hard to say that the R32 is a better car. Yes, it's the original Godzilla, but the R33 ran the Nürburgring 20 seconds faster. And here's why I believe the R33 is our little secret. R32s have been appreciating ever since they became eligible to import here in the US. And with the R34, yes, the creme de la creme, which is gonna be available for legal import here in just a couple of years, they're gonna command such big money that the R33s that give you pretty much the same performance as an R34 are gonna create an even higher demand because they're gonna be less money and so more people can get into them. So if I were gonna put my money somewhere and I wanted a JDM Tuner Hero, the R33 GTR would be it because you could buy one today, and then in a few years when the R34 becomes legal to import, well, I bet you get what you paid for the R33 today, or even sell it for a little bit more. And I can't think of many cars that I would rather rip around in for the next few years than a GTR. Can you? And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm so it shares it with other enthusiasts that love ideal cars. And let us know down in the comments what car or cars do you think are gonna start shooting up in value? And if you're new here, please subscribe and turn on that notification bell. I'm Brad Danger, this is Ideal, and keep living the ideal lifestyle.